Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 30th May. Fifth straight day, Nifty closing in red. Innovate is good ahead of the uncertainty next week. People have chosen to book some profits and sit on a bit of cash. Never a bad idea to enter an uncertain week with some liquidity on your side. One interesting data point out of the 36 sectors I tracked, 20 sectors today closed 1% or less. I'm not talking about stocks, I'm talking about sectors. 13 sectors between 0 and 1%. Only one sector closed 1% above and total three sectors were green out of 36. No surprises in FI data, FI is sold, DI is bought. One interesting point is in this entire month with just one day to go, DIs have sold only for one day, FIs have bought only for three days. The gross sales continue to be high in cash, 21,000 crores sold today, 18,000 bought. Today, it seemed that the buying was happening in HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank. These are the strongest banks in the country. And whatever may be the election results, banks will be required. So people are moving towards safer heavens, it seems. It is hard to go wrong with banks. You may be under the water for some time, but banks eventually will come victorious. At least that seems to be the theory for now. Nifty opened with a gap down, consolidated for some time, then literally crashed. Around 3 p.m. expiry was at the peak. That is where Nifty started recovery. There were some jitters in between. However, it gained nearly 100 points in last 25 minutes. This would have caught so many people by surprise because people don't expect such a drastic reversal after 3 o'clock. VIX did nothing for the day on an average 0%. This particular table does not mean anything today. Reliance was down for the fifth straight day. TCS was down 1.6%. The five green stocks probably held the index together for some time. Otherwise, these cracks would have been a lot bigger. I have made some changes to the automation. For some time, the data was lagging. Yesterday, Bank Nifty was not reflecting correctly. If you observe any problem or any data which is incorrect, please do let me know. The data is now coming from a different source. Nifty down a percent. Bank Nifty held primarily by ICICI, not HDFC. HDFC also was up. However, ICIC was the outperformer. Right now, ICIC seems to be the stronger bank, though HDFC by market cap is way larger. Nifty IT cracked 2.2%. Energy cracked 1.5% as well. Note yesterday, US was really in a bad shape, totally red, except NVIDIA, which goes up every day, and Apple for a change. Both S&P and NASDAQ had closed in deep red yesterday. Gold 72,000, Brent same range around 83, silver corrected a bit today, Bitcoin 68,000, I expect gold and Bitcoin to get into a rally very soon, in fact silver also, I think gold will cross 80 and silver 1 lakh at the same time. This is a snapshot I showed you earlier, this entire column is red, very few exceptions, banking, chemicals and holding companies primarily led by Bajaj. Let's check some of the popular sectors. Aerospace and Defense, BDL had the results today. I have not looked at the results, but that was the only green stock. Rest everything cracked. 1% down for the sector. Automobiles, Madarsan Sumi continued its up move after the fantastic results. Everything else was down. I was surprised by IRFC. IRFC is supposed to be the biggest beneficiary if the current government repeats its term. Coal down, RVNL was up. IRB infra was down 10%. IRB is a big beneficiary of the current government repeating terms. Seems to be heavy booking in the stock ahead of the results. Cement, the entire sector nearly corrected anywhere between 1 and 2%. Adani Enterprises corrected a little. The power pack was down nearly 0.7%. Let's check holding companies. Yeah, Bajaj Holdings was up 2.5%. Now let's see what was down most. Metals and mining. Let's check that. Hindustan Zinc had run up significantly. It is still above 3 lakh crore market cap. 6.5% down. JSW 2%. Tata Steel results not good. 5.8% down. The entire sector was bleeding today. This also has run up a lot in the past one or two months. So a lot of gains to give away. The entire transport infrastructure pack was down 3% as a sector. This sector is supposed to be a big beneficiary if the same government comes back into power. Software and IT services, there was no place to hide. Let's check the final one, oil and gas. Reliance down 1.1%. Nearly the entire sector was sulking today. 
1.3 percent down these are big companies had it not been hdfc bank and icici bank today would have been a really bad day the index might have cracked more than 2 percent if these two were down as well nifty 50 let's check what was down tata steel down most followed by tech mahindra power grid titan wipro all greens were banks followed by bharti airtel in my sector selection video i had showed telecom will do well if markets get into very uncertain mode especially a war or a recession 44 stocks were down six were up in the nifty 50 next 50 42 down eight up indigo was up most 3.35 percent followed by mother sansumi bajaj holdings the stocks which were up had good volumes nothing worthwhile in nifty it just that the volumes were super high nifty energy also the falls came with good volumes in the bigger players bank indices top five were up volumes were fantastic lot of buying happening psu pack sbi was up indian bank hit a lifetime high it has got a big upgrade let me today walk you through my thought process during the day how i took some of the decisions at the very beginning of the day the markets opened gap down and they are falling continuously so I took some short positions that was around 9.20, 9.30 time. Around 10 o'clock, I saw Reliance consolidating and then going up. So I reversed the positions, which means I sold off the short positions. But then Reliance started falling again. This was somewhere around 10.10. So I went short again. Then I didn't do anything till about 12.15. At around 12.20, I saw Reliance going down again. So I shorted a bit more. This was the same time when Nifty also was drifting a bit. Around 12.50, Reliance started rising and I had today's options. They would have bled drastically with the decay had I remained. So I squared off the positions. I sold the put options. In fact, seeing the rapid rise, I actually went long in the market. Then came the zone of confusion. I went long, I went short. I did some rapid trading. Lot of them were in losses, minor ones but still total confusion then finally towards the end of this zone i decided to go with my conviction which was short after that reliance was very volatile up down up down up down i was watching reliance continuously along with nifty nifty was obviously following the same patterns this has been a trend these days around three o'clock markets bottomed out this was a time when my profit was the highest However, I was not expecting the ferocious pullback, nearly 100 point pullback in about 20 minutes time. My profits eroded by nearly 40% in this zone, just this part. And I thought that I'll just leave the trades like they are. But then I changed my mind. I'll talk about the reasoning in the next slide. And I squared off my position literally again in the last five minutes. This is the time when I completely exited. So as of now, I don't have any trades open. Overall for the day, a profit of 70,000. If I equate the previous losses and for the financial year, the options profit is probably something like a 50K right now because there were some losses last month also. So with no positions open, this is the net PNL for this financial year. This is the order book and the series of events I was talking about in the previous section. All right, so my reasoning for exiting the positions and my stand for the next few days. First reason for DIs, tomorrow is perhaps the most important day to support. Saturday is the last day of polling and especially the prime minister's seat is going for the polls. After tomorrow, there will be no mandate from the government to support the markets. But the general expectation probably would be market should be at a high point on Friday end of day. People should not have a negative flavor in their mouth when they go to vote on Saturday. Also, Nifty has corrected for five days. The bears have to take a breather at some point. Every bull run has some corrections. Every bear run also comes with some corrections where the shorters take profits and there's a bit of short covering. So Friday morning, tomorrow morning could be a gap up. There could be a pullback rally that may last the whole day or at least few hours. There could be a reversal maybe towards midday or around lunch, my favorite time of 1.30. Exit polls will start Saturday evening after the polling ends in the last phase. However, I expect the news channels to carry positive news only for the current government, BJP+. Plus. So I don't expect anything major negative during the weekend because of which on Monday there could be a big gap down opening. So I wanted to have a liberty of using the next 2-3 days for decisioning and not carry today's decision. 
also this will reduce the impact of decay on the portfolio because i had bought significant put options without any hedging tomorrow in the day depending upon the market mood i might take certain positions those could be intraday or for monday tuesday also but i'll decide all that tomorrow only hope you are enjoying the volatility and using it to make money however if you are losing money in many trades then better stay out maybe you are not understanding the market moods right now so no point in trading and losing your capital thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow